So I'm really excited for this episode of the podcast today. I'm going to have my good friend, Austin Byerly, on to talk about his experience in seminary, kind of what that's been like, some of the challenges he's faced, uh, some of the joys that he's experienced. And so I hope that you enjoy this special episode of the Methodical Methodist Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Methodical Methodist Podcast a podcast where we talk about why the church is still relevant for us today as we explore themes connected to religion, politics, pop culture, faith, and yes, even the church. Together, we can find out what it means to live into the mission of the church by making disciples. Now, let's get methodical. Hello, everyone. I am your host, the Reverend Andrew Lay, and I'm excited to spend this time on the podcast today. If you like this show, I hope that you might take a minute to subscribe, rate, and write a review for the podcast. It helps to boost the show and make it to where more people can find it. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash methodicalpod, and you can find me on Instagram as well at methodicalpod. So be sure to check me out. Austin Byerly, thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's exciting to be here. Yeah, yeah. Through uh, this dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> well, um, you know, as as we get uh, started today, I, I just wonder if you might start off talking a little bit about your call to ministry. How did you first feel that call, experience that call? What was that like? And then what were some of the ways that you navigated what that call uh, looked like in your own life? Yeah, well, I grew up in the church. Um, ever since a baby, you know, I was in church. I uh, wasn't at church every time the doors were unlocked, but I was at church every Sunday growing up. And I came to have a deep fascination and appreciation of the church, whereas I would come home uh, from worship, I would keep our bulletins. And I would come home and play church. I would go the whole nine yards. We'd pass around offering. I'd deliver a sermon. Um, so I would always be just be fascinated with the church. And that fascination continued uh, to grow in me. And I just always loved being at church. And um, being at church, I mean, being involved in the kids' ministry, being involved in the youth ministry. And it was our time in the youth ministry at First UMC uh, where we were together. Yeah. That both grew up there. We did. We did. And I think it was in the youth ministry, I began really taking seriously my relationship with Christ and with God and kept exploring what that meant. And then as I did that, I began feeling a calling into ministry, probably uh, maybe late middle school, early high school. And we were, it was at Resurrection, a big youth event for the Holston Conference in Gatlinburg every January. And so when they asked, I felt God's spirit upon me, and I went forward and, I guess, accepted that call to ministry. And since that point, I talked with you know, our youth, youth pastor, Lou Crandall, about that a lot, um, talked with you about it a lot, um, and then just being involved in the youth group, helping lead worship on youth Sundays, being part of, I think, the worship committee at church and just being involved in so many different facets of the church uh, really helped me navigate that call to ministry um, through my time in high school. And as I went off to college at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, I got plugged in at the Wesley Foundation up there and I got plugged in um, at a local church, Central UMC, where it just helped me explore my gifts um, and helped me just understand and develop my call into ministry further. Yeah. So when you first experienced that call, did you feel like, I want to do what I see the pastor do on Sunday morning? Like, that's what I want to do? Oh, absolutely. Did you, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you were like, that's it. Like, that. Yeah. I, I want to do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. My parents yeah, always joke around saying they either thought I was going to be a sports broadcaster or a pastor. I love I'm it. the pastor out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, uh, I think both require a certain gift of gab uh -huh. uh, to do that. But yeah, that's awesome. I mean, um, one, one of my favorite memories of, of us growing up at, at that church is we had one youth Sunday in particular where we kind of tag teamed a sermon. Yeah. And um, I don't remember, I don't know if I went first or you went first. 
I went first. That was my first sermon ever. Wow. Was it really? Yeah. And I just went through um, my files not too long ago during this uh, pandemic. I've been cooped up in our apartment. And so I've been going through things and I found the outline of that first sermon. And it was just, oh. wow. It's been a long <laughs> way since then. Oh, same. Because that was pretty early on for me, too. Like I, I had preached some. I had preached to you Sunday before, and then I had filled in at a few churches, I think, leading up to that. Yeah. And, and so it was maybe like, gosh, sermon number four for me. Like it was, it was early on for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, that was just, that's a really neat memory to, to, to have of us both kind of uh, sharing that time. And we were both exploring our calls, yeah. I think about the same time too. Um, I think I got mine a, f- a few years. I'm a little older than you, so I got mine a few years before you did. But that was re- that's just a really neat memory. I, I yeah, have. yeah, it's awesome. I always I always remember you being uh, the first preacher on Youth Sunday. I always <laughs> remember that sermon. Oh man, oh man, yeah, good times though. That was yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed our time together in youth group. Yeah, I, mean, I did too. I did too. It was it was a lot of fun, and I think. Um, I, I felt very lucky to to have somebody else who had the same interest I had mm-hmm. yeah. in the church and in preaching. Mm-hmm. And we've, I think we've done a good job of like maintaining a friendship, talking about things like getting coffee when we're in town to, at the same time. And um, so, that, I mean, I think, I think that's a really neat thing that I'll, maybe not a lot of folks have. Yeah, absolutely. Bring a call. So we kind of, could lean on each other and and navigate things kind of at the same time and together. So, yeah, I'm thankful we're still in the same conference and we'll continue this friendship. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping you don't you don't uh, switch over to the North Carolina conference or something while you're up there. Nah. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. Um, Holston is my home. There we go. There we go. Yep. They did a great video with that title. I remember. Yeah. Um, well, so I know you went to the university of Knoxville Mm -hmm. and that's where you got your undergraduate degree. Um, tell me a little bit about your educational, educational background there. Um, what degree did you receive? What did you study? And then how do you think that crafted your, or helped craft your call? Yeah. As you said, I went to UT Knoxville and I think through a lot of this, I knew I was called a ministry and was hoping to be a pastor at the, when I started uh, my career, I'd be going to seminary. That was the plan all along. And I feel really fortunate to have had that plan and calling and know what I was going to do, but I didn't know what what I wanted to major in. I wanted to major in religion or philosophy. Um, I had someone tell me that do English literature. I was like, that's probably not for me. <laughs> um, yeah. But I settled in after lots of conversation with my parents on public relations um, and communication, which is in the College of Communication Information at UT. And then I minored in business administration. And it was just, it was a great program, but, but lots of fun, made lots of good friends in the program. And it helped me come to understand the communication and um, campaign that goes on with the church. Like I worked um, at central UMC in Knoxville and in my last year there, we ran a capital campaign, Mm -hmm. but through my schooling at UT, we were in our campaign class and having those two coincide together was really uh, fun and having to be on brand and have a good message and strategy for times of crisis for um, any which way the church uh, wind blows it's it was helpful to have that understanding of business understanding of communication uh, social media is such an important part today's ministry all of church is happening on social media online right now and so having that exposure to social media and the strategies that go behind it it's just really helpful and a tool to add to my tool bag for ministry. And I chose that major because I knew I was going to go to seminary. 
and get most of my religious classes there. Right. And so I wanted to have another tool bag or another tool in my tool bag uh, to help in ministry. And so having that little bit of business experience and communication experience will be, I hope, benefit me in the long run. Oh my gosh. I think that's such a smart move. Like that is such a huge part of the job is the administration and those, those business skills, Mm -hmm. communication skills, like, and, and unfortunately those are the things that you won't get in seminary. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So the fact that you got them in your undergrad, I think is, is a really smart move. Um, Cause that's like the day to day stuff. Yeah. You know, that's the Monday through Friday stuff that you have to have and you have to know to basically run a church. I mean, um, like employees, uh, healthcare benefits, uh, all those things are, are such an important part. So the fact that you got some of that, um, in your undergrad is, is really, really good. Yeah, I was, I really enjoyed it and I hope it pays off. Yeah. Down the road. <laughs> I think, I think it will. Um, but I will say, um, I know you went to Tennessee Wesleyan and you majored in pre-seminary, which was super cool because <laughs> when I'm currently a student at Duke Divinity right now mm-hmm. and in the back of my mind, when I first got there, I wish I had taken some philosophy or uh, religion yeah. class because just the jargon and the jump Jump. from what I was learning in communication, the writing styles in communication to now talking theologically was just a whole jump that I wasn't prepared for just majoring in communication and business. Yeah. So, but I caught on, I think. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Still out. (laughs) No, I mean, I think, uh, a part of me is like, I can't believe I got an undergraduate degree with the word pre in it. Like I, it forced me, it kind of painted me in a corner. Like yeah. I was going to have to do something in religion yeah. I, and I was going to, I was going to have to go to seminary. I mean, you have a degree in pre-seminary and you didn't go to seminary. <laughs> like I had to go, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but it, I will say a part of me wishes I had done a different degree. Another part of me is super glad that I got that degree because I really enjoyed my college experience because of that. I enjoyed the classes I took. And I do think it, 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 it introduced me in, into a lot of the things that I would be studying in seminary yeah. and that I did study in seminary. Um, and so I had a lot of the vocabulary going in where as a lot of, of uh, my colleagues in seminary um, were, were kind of having a, like you said, kind of play catch up a little bit with the, with the, with the jargon. Um, but I think it all evens out in the yeah. end, honestly. So. Yeah. I was very thankful. I took a old Testament class my, my last year at UT and I'm so thankful I took that class. I mean, <laughs> it, just having that one little class prepared yeah. me so much for the seminary experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. Like I think I got a lot of my foundational theological ideas and the way I kind of look at um, a lot of things mm-hmm. from my experience at Tennessee Wesleyan. It was a smaller school. We had smaller um, classes I was the only pre-seminary major. <laughs> so we had some other folks who were like church vocation majors, but that was kind of a different track. And so like when I, when I was at Wesleyan, I was really able to have a really great relationship with all of my professors. And, and I was able to, I think, gain a lot of um, just, you know, foundational beliefs and thoughts and understandings before I went under went on to seminary and honestly that part of me thinks I may have even learned more from those professors than I did from my seminary professors um so yeah it's kind of kind of interesting but um so I want to talk about where you're at now you're attending Duke Divinity School um which I'm gonna share a confession that's the school I wished I 
could have gone to, but I chose not to. Um, that's the school I wanted to go to. Um, so I'm a little envious of you, I think. But I, I ended up going to Asbury so that I could serve a church in the conference while I was in school. But you, but you're at Duke uh, Divinity School, and you're in year two, three? I'll just start this upcoming fall will be my third year. Third year. Okay. Okay. So, so you're, you finished up year two. You're about to start year mm-hmm. three. So tell me about your experience so far. Yeah. I mean, I speak for myself. Um, just I'll be at a white, straight, married male Methodist at a predominantly Methodist seminary. Uh, so that's my experience. I know some of my colleagues won't have the same experience as I do, but I've really enjoyed my experience at Duke. It's been great to have um, an intentional community to be with, uh, to navigate the, these uh, seminary years. I think a lot of the best theological reflection um, and processing comes um, over breakfast, um, mm-hmm. at the lake, um, at dinner, at trivia nights, uh, grabbing um, a cold one on a Friday night. It's so having that community there and to process things with you and to go through things with you has been so um, invaluable and been so or so valuable and so so enriching to the experience. I think um, that's been the biggest thing for me at Duke. has been the community that I've been with. Um, I've met so many great friends and partners in ministry that will continue to talk throughout the years about sermon series ideas to read reflect theologically for um, ideas of how to serve churches and you name it. So the community has been great. I've really enjoyed the classes. Um, The academic rigor is high. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's definitely, especially the first year, there's a learning curve. Yeah. But I mean, I've enjoyed the classes. The professors are great. Um, You know, they're the tops in their fields. And so it's kind of, Sometimes I'm sitting in class, you know, look from a class, I'm sitting there and one of my role models is teaching the class. Um, and so it's just really cool. So I've, I've really enjoyed Duke and having a basketball team and a really cool <laughs> arena doesn't hurt anything. Right. Uh, but I love the area. It's a fun area to be in, a uh, fun area to do uh, seminary in. And so it's been really great for me. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. I think, um, yeah, having the basketball team there is a, a plus, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but that's awesome, man. I, I think uh, it's a really great school. Glad you had had a good experience. Um, so so out of the classes that you've taken so far, and, and your program, is it like 72 hours? I take four classes a semester for three years. So I – can't do the math in my head. I've been taking a math class since freshman year of college. <laughs> so that's uh, you're, are you taking um, summer classes or no, no summer classes. So that's that's twenty four classes I think total. Okay, twenty four classes, and that's like so. That's yeah. So if each of those classes are three credits, that's seventy two hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, so out of the, out of the classes and you're, you're two thirds of the way through, mm-hmm. um, out of the classes you've taken so far, what, what's been your favorite? My favorite class I've taken so far in div school was an exegesis of the infancy narratives and exegesis is a term we use for a close academic reading or theological reading of scripture. And so we spent an entire semester looking at the infancy narratives and took it in the fall. So it was kind of building up to Advent. So it was just really fun. We had a great class, always had a good discussion. We had a great professor and it was just really, really fun to um, really sit with those four or five chapters of text for an entire semester. Yeah. So many insights is gleaned. And so I'm always excited for Advent now and Christmas. That's awesome. That's really cool. That'll be, that's a neat, uh, interesting class. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say my favorite classes have been my group of classes have been my old Testament and Hebrew classes. Really? Yeah. I love, I love Hebrew. Awesome. Awesome. So you're an old Testament kind of guy. I am. 
<laughs> I am. <laughs> That's awesome. So do you have an, a favorite Old Testament book? Oh, book, man. I That's a big question. Know. I know. It's hard. Um, I took a class on Ezekiel, and Ezekiel is a pretty weird book. Yeah. Um, Amos is a good minor prophet. Mm -hmm. um, man, there's lots of good ones. I'm going to settle with Amos for right now. Amos. No, I like it. Yeah. But that, that'll change. That'll It'll change. change. <laughs> Ask me in a couple of weeks or something. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's neat. Um, you know, uh, we did a, our Advent sermon series. I don't know if this is, I can't remember when we did it. I guess it was this past Advent. It all runs together. <laughs> um, we did a series kind of on the prophets talking about the prophecies of the, of the, of the birth of Christ. And so that was a really neat um, study, but we did one on Amos. I'm like, I don't think I've ever preached on Amos before. Yeah. Um, that's neat. I like that. I like that answer. That's not what I would have thought would be your favorite. I think my favorite section of the old Testament are the minor prophets. Minor prophets. Wow. That's awesome. So I did an, I did an exegesis class on Isaiah. Um, and like we ran through the whole book and, you know, I, it was interesting too because <laughs> you've got like three different scholars who were saying three different things about who wrote the book and how the book should be split up and all these things. So it was kind of a, that was an interesting class. Yeah. So as you think about your seminary experience, what have been some of the, some of the uh, challenges that you faced? Yeah, I think the biggest, well, First off, the initial just shock and learning curve of seminary was it's just, it's a huge challenge. Like you turn in your first paper and have your first exam, that whole first semester, I felt like I was playing catch up to everyone else. They all know uh, all the jargon and the terms and the philosophy. And so I feel like I was playing catch up that first semester. So that was a difficult um, period, just trying to play catch up. Mm -hmm. But after that, at Duke, it's very academic heavy and theoretical um, theology. And so it's been hard to um, sit in the classroom and think about theology, but not being able really to put what we're learning into practice. Right. I feel removed a lot from the world and the church at Duke because I'm constantly thinking about theology, thinking about scripture, which is important, but I feel so sometimes just disconnected from what's happening on the ground that I wish there were more um, practical classes or practical ways that um, we get our hands dirty um, doing the work of the church instead of just thinking about things and writing papers. Absolutely, which yeah. is a hallmark of Duke and just, I think, some other seminaries and so yeah yeah i mean yeah i know what you mean like you're, you're you're studying all these things you're using all these big terms and at the end of the day you're probably finishing these classes and, and thinking what of that am i going to really use mm -hmm. yeah in my church you know as a pastor what am i really going to use from this um i think i for me, it was like getting that foundation, understanding the the biblical foundation, understanding how to read scripture, how to interpret scripture, how to how to look up these academic sources, getting those tools, like you said, in, in your tool bag, um, and having that, and not necessarily pulling those tools out on Sunday mornings, but um, like at Asbury, where I went to seminary, um, our preaching professor would say, if you stand up in the pulpit and one of the words that come out of your mouth is the word eschatology, yeah, your, your church isn't going to know what that is. You know, like don't, don't use those, those terms like that. Like um, she would, I remember uh, she got onto one student for saying like the, the Greek in, in the Greek language, it says, she said, you lost your audience. As soon as you say that you lose your audience. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, I think that's a hard thing when you're in seminary is to try to remember, like, I'm talking to real people. 
yeah. who did not go to seminary, who did not have this, the jargon, the language down, who did not have um, these tools in their tool bag. And so um, as a pastor, part of your job is to be like, how do I transmit what I learned in seminary and make it practical as I move into a church? Yeah, I mean, just today, me and my buddy were out fishing, talking about the different atonement theories, and no one in our churches is going to ask me probably about the atonement theory, and if someone does, I'll have it, but I think, I mean, that's a concern for me, and a worry for me as I finish, I have one more year at Duke, and then um, hopefully be working at a local church, and how do I come down from the academic mountain Mm -hmm. back down to the practical, the real world, without sounding like a big head. Um, and so I, I do worry about that and I'll work my best to try to make things down to earth. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember Hugh, Hugh, uh, Brian, one of, one of my mentors, um, said something along the lines of, yeah, it usually takes a couple of years for people mm-hmm. to, to preach the seminary out of them, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, uh, which I love that phrase. Um, and also I just want to point out, I wonder how many fishing trips out there, uh, where people have talked about the different types of atonement <laughs> theories. <laughs> I can't imagine that being a, a lot of, a lot of fishing trip topic, uh, discussions uh, that folks have. Well, that's probably all. You can count that on one hand. <laughs> Well, how was, I just think that's so funny. <laughs> how was your experience at Asbury? Like with the, I, Asbury has more of a reputation for being practical, um, doing more practical theology than Duke does. So I was wondering if you could speak on that experience. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't know if I had the typical seminary experience at Asbury um, because I was so <laughs> – I don't want to go into it too much, but yeah. essentially I was driving up there every week. That's true. I drive up about four hours, spend the night one night and knock out about three classes each week that way. So I would drive up, I'd have a night class, wake up in the morning, have a morning class, eat lunch and then have an afternoon class and then drive back. And I did that because I was serving a three point charge, um, back home. And so I was on the road a lot. And I was also like practicing ministry while in seminary, Mm -hmm. which I think helped ground me. Um, But, but Asbury, you know, it's a 96 hour program. So it took a, it took me about three and a half years going year round, like including summer classes and all that, all that fun stuff. Um, But one thing I I appreciated about um, that program was it did offer some, some of the more practical uh, approaches to things. Um, that, that being said, I still saw a bit of a disconnect. Yeah. Um, it was still, it was still seminary. It was still academic. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if I can say I can't, I, there's no way I can compare it. I don't know if I would say it was as academic as Duke or Candler um, say, but, um, it was a 96 hour program and it was a lot, it was a lot of work. Um, but you know, I'm, I think the, the most practical classes I had were like my two preaching classes. Yeah. Um, and, and I took a, I took a preaching class, just kind of the intro to preaching. And then the, the other preaching class I took, cause our, I think our conference requires two. Yeah. Um, that wasn't even a seminary requirement. That was a requirement of our conference. And that's so important. I'm I'm so glad they had that requirement. Um, but the second class I had was a preaching for special occasions. And so we, we preached a funeral sermon. We preached a wedding sermon in there. Um, we preached a sermon on the sacraments in there. So that was kind of neat too, because not only did we have just the intro to preaching, we, I was able to get like some materials for funerals mm-hmm. and for weddings. Like that's a big part of the job too. Yeah. And there's no, classes offered that really cover cover those things in depth but um so yeah i mean it was a mixed bag it was a mixed bag but i think i think i think serving alongside going to seminary was helpful for me 
and I know that not everybody can do that or should do that. Um, mm -hmm. That that was kind of how I felt called and how I um, did things. But but you you had some internships, I think, kind of before, like yeah. you did uh, Central in Knoxville. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? What were some of the insights you gained? Yeah, and my time in undergrad, I worked at Central not in Central Knoxville, and I spent a year as an intern at the Wesley Foundation too. Um, I did at Central, I, I kind of my first year there, I was more or less a shadow, I felt, and just learning the ropes of what ministry looked like um, besides Sunday morning. So I went on a few pastoral visits, um, I helped you know, lead worship, and staff meetings, and help plan worship. And it, it, that was such a formative experience, just being there and being part of a church staff yeah and then i continued for another year and um come work was on staff as a ministry assistant where i helped do i incorporated my major um into my time at central where i helped with social media help with capital campaign help um do redo our, our website and of course, I helped with worship and helped integrate technology into worship. And but again, that was such a formative experience to understand what happens in the church, right? And just to have know that going forward. And then at the Wesley Foundation, I served as the worship um, intern, where we sat and we planned worship, and every week, and we developed kind of a new worship style of a dinner church once a month. So that was fun. Oh, cool! To do. And just to um, experience think about ways we could do worship that looked a little bit different than the traditional worship was really formative too. And to get new collaboration with people was so important as well at the Wesley foundation. Um, and now at Duke, we do field education is one of the big um, staples at Duke divinity school is our field education where uh, sometimes during the, mostly during the summer, we work at churches or local agencies Mm -hmm. Churches are usually across the state of North Carolina, but there's some people who serve outside of the state in Texas and California or all across the country. But I've been fortunate enough to work in a couple of local churches. Wow. I'm serving one right now in Henderson, and unfortunately, it's virtual due to our uh, current state. Oh my goodness, yeah. Um, it's been good doing Zoom Bible study and helping record worship, but Last year, I served up in Roxborough during the summer, Roxborough, North Carolina, a uh, church on Main Street, and it, it was just a great, really, really formative experience for me. I got to do a lot of pastoral care, mm -hmm. worship planning, um, behind the scenes of administration. I mean, because previously at, in undergrad, I was working 10 to 15 hours a week, but the summer in Roxborough I was 40 hours a week, full-time staff. Yeah. So I got the full nine yards of VBS and uh, children's ministry and youth ministry. And it was just really formative and had a great mentor uh, who worked alongside of me, you know, sitting in on families who suffered death recently it was really um, eye-opening and important formative experience and the whole funeral process and grieving process. Um, so it was just really neat and yeah. something that I had in my pocket this past year of when I was in classes, how could um, I apply this to this church setting? And so I'm sure it was really awesome um, to be serving a church and having that um, connect always in the back of your mind how can this you know serve the church and so those internships have been really formative and just helping me learn as i'm new to this you know being a pastor and uh, learning the ropes so it's just really good to have those formative experiences absolutely yeah that's probably where, where you're getting more of the, the practical side of things too yeah um, where you can hopefully kind of apply hopefully some of the things that you're your learning and, and some of that, um, yeah, that foundational stuff. It's like so, pastoral care classes. It, it's good to have pastoral care classes, but pastoral care in the church is you can experience more than a yeah, absolutely. class. And you absolutely, yeah. Experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, 
you're absolutely right. I mean, you can talk about how to go and talk to a family that have just lost a loved one. And that's one thing. And then it's a completely other thing to actually go do that. Yeah. Um, and that'll, that'll happen. It'll, yeah. That'll happen more and more um, kind of as you go through. Um, so kind of, at, you're, you're almost done with seminary. You got one more year. So what are your kind of your plans as you're wrapping things up at seminary? What, what's your plans as you move forward? Well, the ultimate goal is to be ordained elder in the Holston Conference. Um, so I'm about to start writing my commissioning papers for the conference. And so hope to be commissioned uh, in a year, a little less than a year now. Yeah. Uh, which will be exciting, but I have to go through the paper writing process and the interview process. And then hopefully this time next year, I'll be starting serving a church in some capacity. That's awesome. And so that's hopefully what the future holds. Yeah. Do you, do you have a hope to, to maybe serve as an associate or do you want to serve a church on your own or have you thought about it? I think if I had to choose right now, I would want to serve as an associate again, just to have um, learning experience and having a mentor to look up to and help me process these things. And um, if I make a mistake, um, mentor can like, Hey, this is something maybe you did wrong, but maybe you can do it this way next time. And just having, um, the mentorship, I would really just appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm serving as an associate right now and I, I highly recommend it. Um, depending on who your senior pastor is for sure. I've got a great one. Like, um, I, I, I think I got very, very lucky and very fortunate to, to be serving with who I am. But, um, I, 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 I highly recommend it. It's yeah. been really, really great for me. I've learned a lot. I've been able to share, and and create and and have somebody else there to kind of bounce ideas off of and um share ministry with so that's been really really good for me so i yeah i highly recommend it so um and good luck on your paper man <laughs> you. i appreciate that i'm working on my um i'm currently working on my my paperwork for ordination i've, I've got a couple years out but um We've got a three-year period between commissioning and, and ordination, so. Um, too early to start. That's right. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a lot of work. It's fun though. It's fun. Yeah. Um, talk about another formative experience. I yeah. I actually really like a part of me really enjoy just sitting down and writing. Like, what do I actually believe? Mm -hmm. What what is my actual theology? Um, that was really kind of, and that's something I've gone back to too to refer to and see, and kind of see. And, and, and think about kind of as, as different thoughts and, and things occur and pop up. Um, so yeah, man, that'll be, that'll be fun. I hope. <laughs> so this one's kind of a, a, a different question. It's more of a spiritual type um, question, but um, I think it's a question that a lot of folks may have um, because being a seminarian is very busy. Um, you're spending a lot of time reading and, and writing and, and um, thinking and doing all these, these uh, projects and paperwork and, and all these different things. Um, so what are the, some of the ways that you balance kind of your personal life and your seminary studies and then also your spiritual life? Like how, how, do, you, how do you balance all of those things going on? And sometimes I just feel like they're all happening at the same time. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I could say I try to be intentional about the time, um, which I am sometimes, but I think just sometimes just being in the moment, mm -hmm. friends text you, Hey, we're going to do this. Do you want to join? Be just like, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, going, being a part of some chapel services, um, at seminary, have been just good, like reset for the day that happened at midday and after a tough morning class and then an afternoon ahead of you, just uh, to recenter and focus during chapel. Yeah, it's really good. Um, but it, it, it's hard spiritually. That's another challenge I failed to mention. It's uh, one a professor, uh, Ellen Davis, said in one of her sermons that seminary is uh, the sanctification of the mind. If we are to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, 
seminaries the sanctification of the mind. And I really feel that. And it's hard um, because we studied the Bible, we studied God all day. So having just some space designated for your own spiritual growth um, is important. That's where you have to be the most intentional. Um, right. And so in terms of personal life, you just, I think, have um, some boundaries and try to make some appropriate time. You know, um, my wife, Ashlyn, is here and making sure I want to cook dinner and we want to cook dinner and have dinner together most nights. And I think that's important a mm-hmm. time just where we can be together and talk about our days. And that way I'm not in my office doing work. Um, and so that's an important a time for me just to kind of I enjoy cooking and enjoying spending time with Ashlyn and not taking everything too seriously. And yeah. like, mm-hmm. Hey, you can watch an episode of the office right now yeah. if you want. And so not taking things as seriously, which is easier said than done when a paper's due in a week. But yeah. yeah. No, I think that's great advice. And it goes beyond seminary. Yeah. We're all busy. And we all got a lot going on, but just carving out that time and being intentional. I think, I think yeah, you right. said it really well, just um, carving out that time. I know for me, and unfortunately I didn't, and this is going to sound so silly, but unfortunately I didn't discover this until like year three, my last year in seminary. But um, for me, I, I realized one of the things that was lacking in my own life I think I had the spiritual side down and I had the academic side down and I had, I had my friends, you know, but the thing that was lacking was just kind of like some self care stuff. Oh yeah. And, and as silly as it sounds, I started reading the Harry Potter books again. And like, that was kind of like my little escape, you know, and I read all seven books in one year and it was like, and it was so crazy because I didn't want to read anything else because I was already reading yeah. so much, but that's, that's what, for whatever reason, that was kind of what was missing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's great. I mean, you can sit down and watch the office or, or cook dinner, um, yeah. have dinner with your wife, just finding those things that kind of are some self care too. I mean, yeah. I think that's so good. Yeah. yeah. Me and my friend always, you know, try to go, to the gym or the pool daily as often as we can just to escape and uh, de-stress and just uh, do a little bit of self-care and have some time of friendship while we're at it. But just another thing we do. I remember um, being in seminary and, and for some reason they were very fond of saying this. I heard it many times it, and, and from many different people at the seminary. You'll never be less busy than you are now. And I was like, I'm serving three churches and I'm in seminary. I don't know about that, <laughs> but I've kind of found that to be true in a way. Um, there's, there's always things that come up and there's always things that, that you're busy with, but um, just building that, that personal time building, being intentional. And, and maybe that's being intentional about, I'm not going to do anything today. Like this is going to be my day off. Um, or this is going to be, I, um, I had a professor in, at uh, Tennessee Wesleyan, uh, Chris Dover. I don't know if you know Chris. Yeah. Okay. So he, he would talk about this thing where um, Sabbath needs to take place on a number of different levels. You need to take one day a week as your Sabbath. You need to take one week at least um, a year. You know, and he talked about how like these incremental like and then every ever so often you need to take a month if you can, you know, um, how you really need to, to to hit Sabbath every day. And even like certain hours of the day, take a Sabbath. Um, so that's been that was really interesting and, and something I try to keep in the back of my mind because um, us pastors aren't always great about following that uh, commandment. Yeah. Yeah, I've always, I've, you know, also learned you know, in talk, in speaking about Sabbath is, you know, taking an hour Sabbath, but like scheduling breakfast with your friends or grabbing lunch at school and just setting aside that hour where you, we may talk about theology, but we're not 
doing the rigor of classwork right there, but we're engaging in friendship and and so that's just been really important parts of you know my time at Duke having breakfast conversations at our local diner, eating out on the patio, um, and just engaging in all sorts of conversations. I you know, I think you said something really interesting there, like. Um, you, we may talk about theology, but it's not, you know, like that, that's how you get filled up too. Like, I remember, I remember yeah. feeling that way, especially in seminary, like you asked the big questions and it was fun to talk about it with others, see what everybody else thought about it. Like mm-hmm. you went fishing and talked about atonement theory, you know, like that's a way for you to even experience yeah. a Sabbath too. Um, it, it, yeah. You enjoy it. It's also where I think I find the most um, theological insights come from. Yeah. Just the informal conversations where we're listening to others and we're expanding on our own thoughts and trying to say what we believe. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, where the most learning comes from is those informal conversations. Absolutely. It doesn't feel like school. Right. Right. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, anything you want to add or talk about kind of as we start to wrap things up? Not that I can think of. Do you have, and this, I'm throwing this kind of at you. um, Do you have any word of advice for anybody who is maybe thinking about going to seminary? Yeah. Mm. Pace yourself. Um, it's a really neat opportunity uh, to explore um, God in this world and you know, how the church is still relevant for us today. Um, <laughs> but be open and to see what the spirit does yeah. in you because it is challenging. And so be prepared to be challenged. Be prepared to stretch yourself. Be prepared to hear things that you never thought you'd hear Hmm. in your life, but um, keep your spiritual practices, keep your spiritual disciplines, and expand on new ones, um, and get to find a community wherever that community may be, whether it's in the classroom, whether it be in your town, whether it be um, a gym, wherever, find that community um, that you can get plugged into, and just soak it all up. This is a brief period of time where you get to just really think critically about theology, think critically about scripture. And um, I think I will be sad when it's over just because it's hard, but it's fun at the same time. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a good word. I'm just going to say ditto. Like that's, you said it well. Well, Hey man, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today talking about what it's like to be in seminary, how, how you explore your call, a little bit about your faith too. So I just really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. This was a blast. Do it anytime. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Methodical Methodist Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, I hope you might consider heading on over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review of the show. It is very much appreciated. And until next time, stay methodical.